Recently, our beloved Reaver brother Sneeko went on Ali That Was Bitter Truth podcast with Mohammed Hijab and The Warner, and the internet is going wild. There was a clip from the podcast that got several millions of views, and women are going crazy in the comments, and for good reason, which I'm going to get into in this video. Before I even play the clip, I do want to say that all four of them are my brothers, and I even met Mohammed Hijab in person and traveled with The Warner in the Middle East. I did text Nico to talk about this before making this video, but there was no response. With this becoming an issue with the public audience, we as Muslims do have to unfortunately call out things which are incorrect or things that were blatantly said vague to easily be misinterpreted. Everything that I discuss in this video about my views are going to be based on Quran and Sunnah, and I have nothing but love for my brothers. Now, right before I play this video, if you're new to my channel, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Fayed, one of the founders of the Three Muslims podcast. I started making real, raw, unfiltered content to give an unapologetic take on current Muslim problems. Timestamps are going to be in the description box below, but trust me when I say this, you're going to want to watch this segment by segment all the way to the end. And let's jump into it. I don't think that women can have a connection to God without a man explaining it to her. Mm. I don't. Well, you had the man who's the Prophet Muhammad so explaining it to Yeah, like would a woman really pick up the Quran and take her shahada on her own ever? That's a, that's oh, unless take her shahada on her own ever. That's the brother asked a very good question. She's yeah, been through some traumatic experiences. Yeah. What do you she... mean? Like in, in generally, yeah, they can. Like, what do you mean? Like, can women come to Islam without a man? Do you mean? Well, according to the statistics, uh, more well, women majority, majority are coming women. to Islam women, than yeah. men. I don't know if yeah. you know that. Really? For every but, 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 there's four women. But what you're saying, like, but what you're saying is right because that's the reason why a Muslim woman cannot marry a Christian what? or Jew or Hindu. But we are allowed to marry a Christian or a Jew because they're going to become Muslim. Exactly, because we yeah. have the influence. A woman can be easily uh, influenced. But Guys, even these women that are taking their shahadas, they're still being led by sheikhs. They're still being led by the men who are explaining yeah, yeah. it to them. They're never going to find God without a man. They, they need. They... Yeah, can, can... yeah, because it, it, it's true in a sense because we've got prophets. The old men. No, 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 no. But but the, the, the is, is he speaking from that angle, like yeah, from men. Yeah. <laughs> this video was posted four days ago and already has 3.5 million views with the comment section going wild so let me know your initial thoughts in the comments down below and then comment at the end of the video if you change your beliefs after watching my video inshallah men and women are quite literally modern day enemies of one another and there has never been such a divide between us i want to address all these points one by one and address each speaker as well so anything I say of benefit which is correct is from Allah and anything I say which is incorrect is from me. The first problem is this claim that our beloved Reaver brother Sneeko has made about women needing a man to find God. Now I don't know where he gets this from because this ain't Christianity. As a matter of fact when Sneeko first reached out to me about a stream three years ago, I didn't really know him but since he was well known and had questions about Islam, we did the stream. Although he was a Christian, he had a lot of knowledge. He proved to me that he genuinely cared about men, the decline of masculinity, and was diligent in wanting to learn more about religion and God. He even read the autobiography of Malcolm X. Where things get tricky is that a year after that when he accepted Islam, we did another stream where he was still apparently holding on to a little bit of that or pill ideology, which I pushed back on on the stream. There's many more contradictions which I dismantle in this video over here, which you can watch after you've done this video. To defend red pill, it gives men a way out, it, it gives them something to follow. You're sleeping around with a bunch of women that are degenerate you're creating more women that are not wifey you're left with a society that you yourself are basically deeming as degenerate but you are causing that now y'all know i have no shame in calling out this degenerate modern muslima behavior in all of my videos but i also have no shame in calling out degenerate modern muslim men behavior too there might be a lot of RPL clowns in this video right now calling me a womanist or a yes man because of the things that i'm going to expose in this video i don't care bro we have to be fair as Muslim men and call out injustice because at the end of the day, it's not about men versus women. We want to bring men and women closer together, inshallah. But based on what was said right now on the panel with Ali Dawa, I have no choice but to identify some RPL rhetoric in this. As Muslims, we believe that in Islam, men are leaders, maintainers, and protectors over women, that we have authority over women, and that they must obey us and be good to us, just as we must be good to them and take care of them. Islam is unapologetically a patriarchal religion in which men have to step up and women have to follow. But then to say that a woman cannot access God without a man, that's kind of shirk, you're not going to lie. Not saying that this is shirk outright, but to have to go through anyone to get to Allah is shirk. We don't have intercessors in Islam. Every man and woman has a direct relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator. And although he sent prophets and messengers, which were both men, we were both given intellect as men and women and capability and reason to come to Allah alone. Nowhere does it say in the Quran or Sunnah that a woman needs a man to find Allah 
or to worship Allah or to convert to Islam. So my question now to Sneeko and the panel is where does it say a woman requires a man to find Allah? Muhammad Hijab then doubles down on this by saying that the Prophet ﷺ was a man himself. I don't think that women can have a connection to God without a man explaining it to her. I don't well, the man who's the Prophet Muhammad so explaining it to you. And I get it, it was an awkward situation and he probably didn't want to bump heads with Sneeko. But to not tackle this issue on the spot is what gave Sneeko the green light to say this. The man who's the Prophet Muhammad so explaining it to you. Yeah, like would a woman really pick up the Quran and take her Shahada on her own ever? That's now asking would a woman ever pick up the Quran and say the Shahada ever is a little weird, not gonna lie. I know plenty of women that picked up the Quran and started researching about Islam completely independent of men, especially many Muslim reverts who learn about Islam from other Muslims and their friends. Now, do a lot of women look into Islam because of the man that they're dating being in a haram relationship with them? Perhaps. But fellas, why are these Muslim men in a haram relationship with these women anyway? And I'm sure statistically, there are still men that exist that find Islam through women, which is the other way around too. Now, when the woman says... Would a woman really pick up the Quran and take her Shahada on her own ever? That does, that's, unless she's yeah, been through some traumatic experiences. Unless she's been through some traumatic experience. No. Although many women have, not all of them have to go through some severe life-changing experience to find Islam. Many of these women are fine and happy living their lives. They come across Islam and they accept it because Hidayah is from Allah, not from a man. Then Ali Dawa asks for clarification and the warner says, according to statistics, there's about four times as many women that accept Islam compared to men nowadays. According to the statistics, uh, more oh, women are coming women. to Islam women, than yeah. men. I don't know if yeah, you know really. that. For every but, 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 which I find kind of insightful because that's the ratio of woman to men that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows in a marriage polygamously together. For Ali Dawa to now say, this is why Muslim men can marry Christians or Jews. But a Muslim woman can only marry a Muslim man. But, 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 but what, four women but what you're saying, like, but what you're saying is right because that's the reason why a Muslim woman cannot marry a Christian or a Jew or Hindu. But we are allowed to marry a Christian or a Jew because, because they become Muslim. Exactly, because we yeah. have the influence. A woman can be easily uh, influenced. But this is true. But what does it have to do with what Sneeko said, claiming that women can't find God? without a man. This has nothing to do with it and is a false equivalency. This essentially gave Sneeko the green light again to make another false equivocation. Exactly, because we yeah. have the influence. A woman can be easily uh, influenced. But Guys, even these women that are taking their shahadas, they're still being led by sheikhs. They're still being led by the men who are explaining yeah, yeah. it to them. By saying women are led by sheikhs, imams, and religious leaders, which he then conflates with that meaning women require men to find Allah and they can't without them. He even then explicitly says they're never going to find God without a man. Stock for Allah. They're still being led by sheikhs. They're still being led by the men who are explaining yeah, yeah. it to them. They're never going to find God without a man. They, they need, they, yeah. Can, can, yeah you, it's, it's, it's true in a sense because we've got prophets. They're all men. No, brother. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that it isn't you, O prophet, who can guide, but Allah guides whom he wills. Hidayah is from Allah alone. I genuinely feel that Ali Dawa was just stunned at the end and didn't even have it in him to respond. They then laugh, which seems like a vibe, Allahumma barik. Like for men? <laughs> what is the benefit that we can derive from this? Now, I have an issue with the Bitter Truth show altogether because of the free mixing that they allow and the lack of haya where you have Muslim women complaining about their intimacy issues to non-mahram next mans. But hey, he's been advised about this, but he doubles down on having the show and the need for having the show in the modern day, claiming that scholars have given him the green light without exactly mentioning who. Which Muslim scholars? <laughs> Which Muslim scholars? But then to not call out this, which was mentioned by Sneeko, and to then just publish the video is very disheartening to me. When our revert brothers like Sneeko or Andrew Tate say something clear-cut wrong, we have to address it on the spot. We don't gotta be rude about it, but we do have to professionally address it on the spot. An example of this is when Andrew Tate accepted Islam and went on many podcasts like Mohammed Hijab, and he still spewed some stuff that he used to before Islam, which would be out of ignorance, such as things like, even God as an idea is powerful. Now, I don't blame him because he's a revert, and many times reverts are ignorant on these things. But to not check him and tell him that, you know what, that's cool, and God as an idea to keep society in check might be powerful, but we as Muslims don't believe in God as an idea. Allah actually exists as an entity. So yeah, all prophets and messengers were men, and both men and women have the message conveyed through them. We don't need sheikhs to come to Islam. This is ridiculous because countless men and women find Islam through other videos or YouTube or Quran and accept Islam because Hidayah is from Allah alone. This, however, might be contradictory, 
to Christians, because in Christianity, there is a religious hierarchy where women have to find God through men, like husbands, pastors, and even Jesus is stuck for Allah. Whereas in Islam, we have religious authority over women as we're responsible for them, protecting them, them having to obey us and our leadership, except when it turns them away from Allah. But they don't need a man to come to Allah. Let me know what you guys think about this. I also have a very special announcement. I'm launching a brand new podcast with one of my closest brothers very soon. We discuss raw and honest topics like marriage, masculinity, femininity, why men cheat, why women cheat, secrets to a healthy, long-lasting, successful marriage, inshallah, mahar, single moms, divorcees, and it's launching June 1st, inshallah. My goal is to have very high production quality, and I'll tease some details over the next few weeks, inshallah. So make sure to comment down below, hashtag podcast if you made it this far, so I know who's actually looking forward to it. And as always, to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, to level up on your self-improvement as a Muslim man, links in the description, or to join my Muslim men's community, links are in the description box down below. I also added in an actual weekly call from my men's community down below for free that you can watch on YouTube. It's over three hours, and if you like it, join us now before prices go up, inshallah. I'll see you next week. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.